have discussed the working principle of Takagi and Sugano's approach of fuzzy reasoning tool and this particular approach is nothing but a precise fuzzy reasoning tool. That means, we will be able to establish the input output relationship in a very accurate way. Now, today we are going to discuss how to represent this Takagi and Sugano's approach of fuzzy reasoning tool using the structure of a neural network. So, that we can train, we can optimize the performance of this particular the fuzzy reasoning tool. Now, the title of your today's lecture is your neuro fuzzy system based on Takagi and Sugano's approach. Now, let us see how to model this Takagi and Sugano's approach of fuzzy reasoning tool and how to develop the neuro fuzzy system. Now, this particular neuro fuzzy system is very popularly known as adaptive neuro fuzzy inference system that is nothing but your n phase. So, this is nothing but the n phase. So, and in short this is known as a n f i s adaptive neuro fuzzy inference system. Now, the first proposal came in the year 1993 by Zhang and after that. So, this particular n phase has been modified in a number of ways. Now, to explain the working principle, let me consider a system having two inputs like i 1 and i 2 and there is one output that is O. So, this is a very simple system having two inputs and one output. So, we have got i 1 and i 2 and we have got the output O. Now, let us see how to model using the principle of your this n phase. Now, the two inputs are represented using a triangular membership function distribution. Now, here the first input that is i 1 that is represented using three linguistic terms like your low, medium and high. And for simplicity we have considered the triangular membership function distribution. So, this type of triangular membership function distribution we have considered. Now, truly speaking actually uh, if you want to model more accurately, so might be we will have to go for some sort of nonlinear distribution also. For example, I can also take some sort of Gaussian distribution. For example, if I consider the low, medium and high and if I consider the Gaussian distribution, the Gaussian distribution will look like this and there will be some overlapping of the regions in this Gaussian distribution. So, if I consider the Gaussian distribution for this particular i 1. So, this could be low, this could be your medium and that could be the high. So, this type of nonlinear distribution also we can consider, but for simplicity as I told we have considered the linear membership function distribution that is your the triangular membership function distribution. Now, the size of this particular distribution are depends on. So, this particular the d 1. Now, d 1 indicates the base width for this right angle triangle or half base width of this particular the isosceles triangle. Now, similarly to represent the second variable that is your i 2, we are going to use three linguistic terms like your small, large and very large. And once again for small we are going to consider this type of right angle triangle. For large we are going to consider this type of isosceles triangle and for very large we are going to consider this type of your the right angle triangle. And your the size of this particular distribution. So, that is decided by actually your this d 2. So, d 2 is going to represent the base width of your this right angle triangle and the half base width of this isosceles triangle. Now, during the optimization and during the training actually what will happen we will try to vary the values for this particular d 1 and d 2 
and accordingly we will be getting the modified membership function distribution for I 1 and I 2. Now, here uh, one thing we will have to mention that in Takagi and Sugeno's approach we do not consider any membership function distribution for the, the output. And here as we discuss the output is expressed as the function of the input parameters that is O is nothing but f of your i 1 and i 2. Now, we can consider the linear function of the input parameters, we can also consider some sort of nonlinear function of these particular the input parameters, but uh, most of the time we generally use only the linear function of the, the input parameters. So, these are the membership function distribution for the, the two inputs and as I told that for this output there is no membership function distribution used. And here as we discussed while discussing the Takagi and Sugane's approach that output here is expressed as the function of the input parameters. Now, you can see that the output of the ith rule that is denoted by y i is nothing but a i i 1 plus b i i 2 plus c i. Now, i 1 and i 2 are the input parameters and these a i b i c i are the coefficients. Now, these values for the coefficients are to be determined now using some optimizer. Now, we can use the least square error technique to find out what should be the values for this a i b i and c i. We can also use some sort of nature inspired optimization tools like genetic algorithm and others like what should be the optimal values for this particular the a i b i and c i. Now, if you remember for the first input that is i 1. So, we have considered three linguistic terms and for the second input that is i 2 we have considered three linguistic term. So, we have got 3 multiplied by 3. So, 9 possible combination of the, the input parameters and that is why. So, here this y i is a i i 1 plus b i i 2 plus c i where i varies from 1 to up to n. So, we have got 9 combination of the, the input parameter that means, we have got 9 rules. Now, let us see how to determine the output uh, for a set of input here. Now, this shows actually uh, the architecture of this n phase. Now, let me explain this particular architecture. Now, here as I consider that there are two inputs like your i 1 and i 2 and we have got only one output that is O and this n phase architecture consists of actually six layers. Now, this layer 1, so this is known as actually the input layer and here we use linear transfer function on the, the input layer. Then layer 2 is nothing but the fuzzification layer that means corresponding to the real values of this i 1 and i 2. So, we try to find out what should be the membership function distribution. For example, say i 1 is represented using three linguistic terms that is your low, medium and high and the connecting words between your the, the neurons lying on the first layer and the neurons lying on the second layer are going to represent what should be the base width of the triangular membership function distribution or half base width of the, the membership function distribution. Now, for example, the connecting words between so this particular neuron and this particular the node is nothing but your say V 1 1. Similarly, we have got the connecting word V 1 2, we have got V 1 3. Now, here so this V 1 1, V 1 2 and V 1 3 may have different numerical values and once again what we consider is your we consider the average of these three that is nothing but is your V 1 1 plus V 1 2 plus V 1 3 divided by 3 and this is nothing but is your say V 
uh, 1 average and we assign that v 1 1 equals to v 1 2 is equals to v 1 3 is nothing but is your v average. Now, this we do just to consider the symmetrical membership function distribution for this particular the i 1. Similarly, i 2 is represented using three linguistic terms like your small, large and very large and we try to find out the connecting words between. So, this particular neuron and that particular node that is nothing but v 2 4. Similarly, we have got v 2 5 and here we have got v 2 6 and once again we follow the same method. So, we try to find out the v 2 average. So, v 2 average is nothing but is your v 2 4 then comes v 2 5 and then comes your v 2 6 divided by 3 and after that we assign that v 2 4 equals to v 2 5 then v 2 6 and that is nothing but v 2 average. And one second we do just to maintain the symmetrical membership function distribution for the different linguistic terms. Now, if you see the input of the second uh, uh, neuron second layer. So, that is nothing but your 2 i 1. So, 2 i 1 means that is the input of the first neuron or the first node lying on the second uh, uh, layer and so these particular inputs are nothing but is your the, the, the values the real values of these particular parameters like i 1 and i 2 i 2 for, for, for here and here actually we will have to carry out some sort of the fuzzification and for this particular fuzzification. So, we can get your the mu value. So, this O 1 2 that is 2 O 1 is nothing but the output of the first neuron lying on the second layer. So, here actually I will be getting some sort of mu value that is the membership function value that is your mu low. Similarly, here we will be getting the mu medium and here we will be getting the mu high and if you see here also you will be getting the outputs like mu small then comes your mu large and here we will be getting your mu very large. So, all such uh, the membership function values we will be getting as the output of the, the second uh, layer. Now, let us concentrate on the, the third layer. Now, on the third layer we have got all 9 possible combinations of the input parameters. So, all the 9 rules we are going to consider here and what should be the input of a particular neuron lying on the third layer. For example, say 3 i 1 that is the input of the first neuron lying on the third layer. So, the inputs are nothing but your say mu low. So, this is the inputs are nothing but mu low and we have got another input and that is nothing but is your mu small. So, mu low and mu small will be used as actually the input. For example, say one input is coming from here and another input is coming from here. So, there are two mu values and these two mu values will be multiplied just to find out the firing strength or the output of this particular the third layer. So, output of this that is denoted by pi. So, that can be written here that is nothing but is your mu low multiplied by is your mu that your the small. So, we can find out like what should be the output of this particular the third layer. Now, following the same principle, so I can find out the output of each of these particular neurons lying on the, the third layer. So, I will be able to find out the firing strength that is denoted by is your the w. Now, here actually uh, we uh, try to we multiply the two mu values and unlike the Mamdani approach, we do not consider the minimum. So, here we simply multiply the two mu values. Now, each of the mu value is going to lie between 0 and 1. 
So, it is multiplied form or the multiplication. So, this is also going to lie from 0 to 1. So, we will be getting some the firing strength that is w 1 w 2 up to your w 9 and the values of the firing strength will lie in the range of 0 to 1. Now, then we concentrate on this particular your the layer 4. Now, if I concentrate on E particular the neuron on layer 4, for example, I am going to concentrate here. Now, if you see the inputs, so all such W values from the different neurons of the previous layer as coming as input to this particular the neuron. So, all such W values are coming as input and here you will be getting all your the W values that means all 9 W values and then we try to find out the normalized value for this particular W 1 as the output and your W 1 is nothing but W 1 bar is nothing but W 1 divided by W 1 W 2 up to your W 9. So, we try to find out what should be the normalized value for this particular your the firing strength. Now, once you have got it as output of the fourth layer, now we are proceeding to the, the fifth layer. Now, on fifth layer you will find that say we are going to find out what should be the output of each of this particular the rule. For example, say we are trying to find out or we are trying to calculate what should be the output of your the first rule. The output of the first rule is nothing but your a 1 i 1 plus your b 1 i 2 plus your c 1. Now, if I get the values of this a 1, b 1 and c 1 and if I supply the numerical values for i 1 and i 2. So, very easily I can calculate what is your y 1. Now, similarly here we try to find out y 2 y 3, y 4, y 5, y 6, y 7, y 8 and y 9 and once you have got that. So, we simply multiply. So, this your w bar that is the normalized value for the firing strength and this particular y 1. So, and that will be the output of your. So, this particular neuron lying on the, the layer fifth that is the fifth layer. So, by following the same procedure, so I can find out the output here, I can find out the output, I can find out for all the all the nodes lying on the, the fifth layer. And once you have got that particular thing, now on sixth layer, we sum them up just to find out what should be the final output of this particular the network for one set of input parameters that is your i 1 and i 2. Now, whatever I discussed here, so those things actually are written uh, uh, step wise in the next slide. Now, before that uh, let me tell you that corresponding to the set of inputs that is i 1 star and your i 2 star. So, only 4 rules are going to be fired out of 9 and those fired rules are nothing but if i 1 is low and i 2 is small, then y 1 is nothing but a 1 i 1 plus b 1 i 2 plus c 1. Now, this particular actually y 1 I can also write the, the notations which I am following. So, in this particular format. Now, here you can see, so I am using one AND. Now, this particular AND is actually not the AND operator which we used in Mamdani. So, in Mamdani approach we use this type of AND operator, but in Takagi and Sugeno actually we do not use the AND operator. Instead we use the conjunction AND and that is nothing but A and D small letter. So, here in Takagi and Sugeno's approach, so use this type of AND conjunction AND. Now, similarly if you see the second fired rule which states if i 1 is low and i 2 is large, then y 2 is nothing but a 2 i 1 plus b 2 i 2 plus c 2 and this is nothing but y 2. Now, similarly we can also find out the output of the third rule 
and that is nothing but y 4 and the rule is as follows if i 1 is medium and i 2 is small then y 4 is nothing but this that is a 4 i 1 plus b 4 i 2 plus c 4 and the fourth fired rule is as follows if i 1 is medium and i 2 is large then y 5 is nothing but is your a 5 i 1 plus b 5 i 2 plus c 5 and this is nothing but is your y 5. So, these are the outputs of these four fired rules and uh, and let us see how to how to proceed all such things and how to explain step wise. Now, whatever I discussed I am just going to write here step wise. Now, layer 1 we use uh, your the linear transfer function and that is why the output is nothing but the input. So, this 1 O 1 is nothing but 1 I 1 and that is nothing but I 1 star. Similarly, 1 O 2 is nothing but uh, 1 I 2 and that is equal to your I 2 star because we have used the linear transfer function and y equals to x. So, output is nothing but input. Now, layer 2 is the fuzzification and as I told we try to find out the membership function value that is mu. Layer 3 uh, we try to find out the firing strength for each of the rules. Now, to determine the firing strength for each of the rules. So, what we do is the mu values we multiply. So, corresponding to the first fired rule the firing strength is nothing but is your mu low corresponding to i 1 star multiplied by mu s m corresponding to your i 2 star. So, we will be getting the firing strength by following the similar procedure we can find out what is y 2, what is y 4 and what is your y 5. Now, once you have got that firing strength now we can find out your the normalized firing strength that is your w 1 bar is nothing but w 1 divided by w 1 plus w 2 plus w 4 plus w 5 and by following the same procedure. So, we can find out the normalized firing strength like your uh, w 2 bar, w 4 bar then w 5 bar. So, all such normalized firing strength values we can calculate and in layer 5. So, what we do is we try to find out the output that is the output of the first neuron lying on the, the fifth layer is nothing but w 1 bar multiplied by y 1. Then 5 O 2 that is the output of the second neuron lying on the fifth layer is nothing but w 2 bar multiplied by y 2 then comes your 5 O 4 that is W 4 bar multiplied by your Y 4. Then comes your 5 O 5 that is the output of the fifth neuron lying on the fifth layer is nothing but W 5 bar multiplied by is your Y 5. So, we can find out the output and once you have got those outputs so now we are in a position to find out the final output or the overall output and that is nothing but your 6 O 1 is nothing but W 1 bar Y 1 plus W 2 bar Y 2 plus W 4 bar Y 4 plus W 5 bar Y 5. So, we can find out the output of this particular the, the set of inputs. Now, here we should mention that the performance of this particular n piece depends on the coefficient of transfer functions that is a i, b i and c i and of course, it depends on the membership function distribution for these uh, the, the two inputs that is your i 1 and i 2. Now, here actually what we do is like if we just go back to the architecture if you look into the architecture once again. Now, this particular architecture you can see there are a few uh, the neurons which are denoted by circle 
on the other hand we have got a few other neurons which are denoted by the square. So, this is nothing but a square. So, we use two types of symbols in this particular the end piece one is your the circle and another is your the square. Now, wherever we use square there is a chance of further improvement there is a chance of optimization. So, if you see so here I am putting your the square that means, we can optimize uh, the, the, the values for this particular the, 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 the connecting weights that is your V 1 1, V 1 2 and V 1 3 and that is why we have put square here. So, there is a chance of improvement, there is a chance of optimization. Now, for the same reason actually we have put here square that means, we can also optimize your the membership function distribution for these linguistic terms that is your uh, small large and very large. Now, similarly if you see here also you have put actually your the, the, the square uh, symbol in place of the circle that means, here also there is a chance of improvement and that improvement actually lies on the value for this particular your y. Because if you write down the expression for this particular y 1, you will see that we have got uh, your a 1 i 1 plus your b 1 i 2 plus your c 1. So, this particular a 1, b 1 and c 1 are actually going to control the value for this particular your y 1. So, there is a chance of further improvement of this particular the performance by selecting the proper values for this particular a 1, b 1 and c 1. Now, as I have already mentioned that these values for the coefficient that is your a i, b i and c i can be determined using some optimizer. For example, we can use the traditional tools for optimization also. We can use some sort of the your uh, the uh, error minimization algorithm. So, that we can find out this coefficient like a i b i and c i. So, that it can predict the output very accurately and the error in prediction should be as minimum as possible. That means, your here there is a chance of improvement of the performance of this particular network and that is why we put the square here in place of this particular your the circle. So, this is the way actually your so this particular the network works and ultimately for the set of inputs we will be getting that particular the output and as I told that we can improve the performance using some optimizer some traditional optimization tool we can use. We can also use some sort of nature inspired optimization tool. Now, if you use genetic algorithm to tune this particular n phase. So, what you can do is on the g a string we can put all such uh, uh, the information like your connecting weights that is your the v values. So, the connecting weights we can put that is the v values uh, like your v 1 1, v 1 2, v 1 3 then we can also put your v uh, like uh, 2 4 then comes v 2 5 then v 2 6 all such things you can put there. And we can also uh, encode the values of the coefficients like your a i, b i and c i. Then G will take the responsibility to find out what should be the optimal values of this particular parameter. So, that this n fish work in the optimal sense. So, that the n fish should be able to make the prediction of the output for the set of inputs as accurately as possible. Now, here actually what we do is as we have already discussed. So, this is nothing but the calculated output and this calculated output will be compared with the target output just to find out the deviation for the first training scenario that is nothing but is your d 1 and we try to find out the target output 
and your this calculated output and we consider the mod value. Now, uh, corresponding to a particular g s string the way I discussed we pass all the training scenarios one after another. So, if I pass the second training scenario, so I will be getting d 2. Similarly, if I pass the lth training scenario, so I will be getting like d l you sum them up find out the average and that particular average value will be the, the fitness of the j. So, if I consider so, this type of population of the j if it is a binary coded j. So, I will be getting f 1 similarly for the second I will be getting f 2 as the fitness and for the nth one. So, I will be getting f n as the fitness and using the fitness information and with the help of its operator like reproduction crossover and mutation j will try to find out or try to evolve like what should be the optimal values of these particular parameters. So, that this NPs can make the prediction as accurately as possible. Now, if I use genetic algorithm to optimize on or train this particular NPs network. So, this will be known as actually genetic neurophagy system and a more specifically. So, if I use genetic algorithm to tune this n phase. So, this is very popularly known as your g a n phase. So, this g a n phase means I am just going to optimize the n phase parameters uh, the, 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 the variables for the n phase with the help of a genetic algorithm and g a n phase will be able to evolve a very optimal and your the suitable n phase network. Uh, which will be able to make the prediction for the input output relationship as accurately as possible. Thank you.